Project 2025, spearheaded by conservative think tank, the Heritage Foundation, is a years in the making, 900 plus page presidential transition plan, giving Team Trump a detailed blueprint for a potential second term. That blueprint would radically remake the federal government if executed, with its stated goal being, quote, to assemble an army of aligned, vetted, trained and prepared conservatives to go to work on day one to deconstruct the administrative state. The project is built on four pillars, which go well beyond previous transition efforts. There's the policy agenda, personnel, training, and a 180-day playbook to execute the think tank's plans. Many authors of the blueprint are former Trump officials. Joining us now, one of the architects of Project 2025, the president of the Heritage Foundation, Dr. Kevin Roberts. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Dr. Roberts. Thank you for joining us and coming. I know people are like, y'all got the architect of the of 2025? Yes, because everyone has been talking about it. And we saw an interview that you did with the Associated Press, and we've been reading through some things. And I, I think we just want to first start with anchoring, um, anchoring this conversation in. You told the New York Times that this plan is a plan that you, you know, is for anyone. It's not just for Donald Trump. You would like if President Biden would implement some of it, but you don't think that that's going to happen. And so you reject the, the assertion that this is a plan that was cooked up specifically for the second coming of the Trump administration. I appreciate that question because as your, your lobby shows when you walk in, you've got the word honesty and the word accuracy there. And that's an honest and accurate depiction. And I'm grateful. Number one, the Heritage Foundation couldn't do that because we are nonpartisan. We can't be tied to one candidate. Secondly, we have offered a briefing of Project 2025 dating back to last year to every candidate for presidency, including President Biden. Honest to goodness, I would have been thrilled if President Biden and his team asked for a briefing. We understand that we have differences of opinion on just about everything. But at Heritage, we believe in telling the truth with a smile on our face. But the last point I should make is that now that President Trump is the nominee and President Biden has not taken a Project 2025 briefing, President Trump is going to make decisions about policy in his administration if he wins. Project 2025 is something that's going to transcend the next four years, the next 10 years. It really is, for the first time in the history of the conservative movement, the apparatus for policy and personnel. Mm -hmm. That's the most important thing to remember. I have one follow-up. It's just that you have said that um, this plan is about instituting uh, institutionalizing Trumpism. So, because I also know you all, not just the president of the Heritage Foundation, you're also president of the Heritage Action, which is the political action committee. And so, is it tied to Trump or not? I said the context for that comment to the New York Times was that the work of the Heritage Foundation was to institutionalize Trumpism. Trumpism as a new version of conservatism, mm -hmm. a conservatism that recognizes that by every objective measure, the United States is weaker in 2024 than it was in 1984. We also happen to think that's reversible, by the way. We're, we're ultimately optimists. And by institutionalizing Trumpism, what we're saying is that even though we are known as Ronald Reagan's think tank, I'm a son of the Reagan revolution, I'm very proud of that, that that's 40 years ago. And we need to understand what time it is in America. And right now, Donald Trump, whether someone likes it or not, I happen to like it, is the standard bearer for conservatives. Well, Michael, what time is it? Well, yeah, yeah I, I, I don't think it's time for Trumpism in, in that regard, because one of the things that as, as a lifelong <clears throat> Uh, follower and participant in heritage, having spoken at various times there uh, in the roles that I've played in the party, I see this as a dramatic shift away from those Reagan X principles when you have someone like Trump who has advocated some of the things he has. But before we get to that, I want to get to the nub of this because you can't really do anything until you remove what has been identified as the problem, and that is 50,000 federal employees. Um, Axios quoted, uh, note, noted, uh, quote, the massive headhunting quest aims to recruit 20,000 people to serve in the next administration as a down payment on 4,000 presidential appointments plus potential replacements for as many as 50,000 federal workers who are policy adjacent, as Trumpers put it. Policy adjacent to what? I mean, you're talking about people who've been in federal government. My daddy was a federal government employee, so I would be really appalled thinking that he could be on someone's chopping block because they think he is part of some deep state um, uh, yeah, effort. How? Talk to us about what that looks like. If, if Heritage is calling for removing 50,000 federal employees, who are you replacing them with? The number and, and where do they come from? I mean, even if even if it's not 50,000, if it's 10,000, if it's 2,000, where are they coming from, and who are you replacing them with? Because. I, I suspect a lot of those people you're talking about have been in the federal service for a long time and have served not just 
Republican administrations, but also Democratic administrations, etc. <clears throat> they have. And 95 percent of them who give political contributions, give them to the Democratic Party. That's, but that's, I, so I, re I reject that so again, Michael, you're gonna, that you're somehow... Tell, you're going to fire someone because they wrote a check to a Democratic candidate? No, we're going we're gonna to fire someone, and the number needs to be more than 50,000, considering that there are more than 2 million federal employees, because over the last century, the radical left has seen the administrative state as the fourth branch of government. They're unelected bureaucrats, nothing mm -hmm. against your dad, obviously, right. as a human being. You know that right. about me and heritage. Right. But ultimately, we have to devolve power from the imperial but city of Washington back to the people. Because he wrote a check to a Democratic candidate without any appreciation or understanding where his political allegiance is. We will dramatically are. reform that agencies matter? that take if rights doing away their from job, people. Why does that matter? They're doing their job about a mission that's misaligned. For example, the U.S. Department of Education. Thankfully, President Trump deserves credit for saying that he wants to end the Department of Education. That means that employees in that agency, even if they've been serving that mission with great competence, will have to go look for another job. What's more important than that, Michael, is that we actually have a delivery mechanism for education in this country that reflects the 21st century. So at Heritage, we see this a very different way. You want to look at it from the lens of unelected bureaucrats, most of whom, not your dad, yeah. I guess, who want to say that they are more important than the everyday American. We want to look at it from the standpoint of the everyday American and say, it's time that they are put in the driver's seat rather than unelected bureaucrats. Yeah, but they aren't going to be in the driver's seat because they aren't going to be doing the jobs. You're, the folks you're identifying who are Trump aligned are the ones who are going to be coming you are, in. You are positing that those people are incompetent. And I can I'm tell no, you no, from I'm looking not. at the no, resumes positing, of the 11,000 that they're very well As qualified. much as you're thinking I'm positing these people are incompetent, you're positing that they're somehow in, uh, executing a nefarious agenda. Some of them are. Some, Why well, does the Environmental Protection but Agency have 300 you identified them? If I who could interject, they? because I did actually work for the federal government, and as I worked did with I. the number, right. as, as did the chairman, and I worked with a number of those civil, we call them civil servants in the United States government, people who are not political appointees, um, and they have the institutional if only knowledge. they acted that way. Well, I think Alicia has a question along those lines about one of the policy priorities that um, you all have identified in Project 2025. I actually, Dr. Roberts, have a question um, about this upcoming election. Is your organization going to accept the results of the 2024 presidential election? Uh, um, I believe that Dr. Roberts can't hear. So uh, Alicia just asked, is your organization going to accept the results of the 2024 election, regardless of the outcome? Yes, if there isn't massive fraud like there was in 2020. What does that mean? If, if there isn't massive fraud. Do you believe that there was not massive fraud? But yeah, where, there was massive fraud. We have an election where fraud database that has documented that over years. By the way, the Heritage Foundation has been concerned about election integrity for decades, not just about 2020. We've been documenting this problem for a very long time. And if the, the, one of the I believe, according to the Heritage Foundation, sir, there, um, to, by your count, Heritage Foundation has done an investigation. And according to your count, there have been 1,513 proven instances of voter fraud across the United States since 1982. Yeah, that's probably 1,513. One they're very hard to document. <laughs> and the Democrat Party is very good at fraud. The key thing here, which I think we would both agree on, is that we aspire at the Heritage Foundation to seeing a poll after this election where every American believes their vote was counted. I care as deeply about someone on the political left with whom I disagree saying that they have confidence in the outcome of the election. It seems rather than turn this into a partisan conversation, which you do a good job of at MSNBC, we might say we aspire to something more noble, which is that every American believes their vote counts. I mean, I don't think it's partisan, partisan to this. ask if you will accept the results of the election. Alicia, I don't know if can you yeah. hear Alicia now. Yeah, Alicia, do you have another question? I, I can hear. I do have another question. I'm, I'm specifically Still, yeah. interested as it relates um, Dr. Roberts to the deportation of immigrants in this country, just understanding sort of how it is going to work. We talk about folks on the interior, how you see um, a, a future administration utilizing the National Guard, ICE, police forces to deport something like 11 million people. Could you hear? Yeah. So she is asking about uh, immigration and how you see immigration, how um, in this plan, how you talk about using like the National Guard to deport individuals. Like, what is the, uh, Alicia, and do tell me if I am adequately. Yeah, people on the interior specifically. People not on the, border. the interior specifically, not people in the border, people within this country. Well, first of all, we need to close the border. And secondly, we need to have the biggest mass deportation system ever in the history of America because it is unjust and illegal and 
evil that more than 10 million illegal aliens have come to this country. It's imperative that we send those people back, invite them back to come through the legal system. We love immigrants at Heritage, but we also love the rule of law. So how do you plan to carry that out? Well, are you talking about going door to door? Because that's what the, I mean, I could read from the plan, but I think the, the first thing is that there's going to be a lot of self deportation. The interesting thing, as you no doubt know, is that simply talking about this and beginning to implement a plan and President Trump deserves a lot of credit for talking about this causes people to say, I don't want to run the risk of being arrested for doing something illegal. But secondly, there are great plans using the Department of Homeland Security to return these people back to south of the border. The great thing is even a majority of people on the political left agree with this because they see the damage that this has done. Well, I, just to, before we go. I well, think we want to take a couple more minutes. Yeah, yeah, and so I know we're being told to wrap, but we want to take a few uh, more minutes. No, I'll stay as long as no, you no, want. No, no, no. <laughs> just ask you real quick. So what do these people do? What are they doing now? Which people? The, the folks, the 11 million, 20 million, whatever you want to deport. A right? lot of them are committing crimes like murdering the 12 year old girl in Houston. Uh, in fact, so that's very one, that's one that. out of 11 million. Uh, what, what is the, we we what can is take the, the remaining time of the segment and I can give you a lot in of examples. In Texas, undocumented immigrants were 37 point one percent less likely to be convicted of a crime. Um, undocumented immigrants, and uh, according to a survey, University of California Riverside study, thirty three percent less likely to, the to be in prison as of twenty twenty one. I'm Georgia. just giving the numbers. Well, what do you tell the parents of those people, those young girls who were killed? This is I mean, well, you, 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 the preponderance you, of these people, what you, what Michael, are male. But what is the difference between an, an illegal immigrant? who unfortunately engages in that activity. And we don't like that, I want to be clear. And we, and we, we don't do the term illegal, so yeah, we don't, undocumented we don't do undocument, individuals. Undocument, That's sweet, they're illegal aliens. Und, undocumented individuals versus um, anyone else who who commits the same crime. Well, I mean, it's so what you're saying is because you have this instance of individuals behaving badly, that that's a reflection of every individual in that community, and that's just not the case. No, is it's, it? It, it, what is the case is that because the preponderance. I mean, what of, percentage of those people, the, the 11 million that you want I'll to answer deport? Your question, no, I'm you gonna say, no, I'm gonna just, I just want to clarify my question. Okay. That's what I'm trying to do. What percentage of those individuals that you want to get rid of, move out of the country? actually commit crimes. Our analysis in Texas, Georgia, and New York shows that a preponderance of the illegals who have come in what's are, un I don't are, know, what's that are unattached male, and there are unattached males, and the disproportionate number of them are people who are not even making any attempt to be well, illegal. Well, what is that and number? Obviously, are you a talking large number 10 of them out of 1,000, or are you talking, you know, I'm just trying to get Well, a, um, I, I just would say, um, and if Alicia were sitting here and you could hear her, she would say that you are weaponizing a uh, uh, a horrific murder to smear 11 million people. That is and a that laughable is what assertion. Is what Joe Biden is doing is weaponizing the entire Before we let you go, American, Dr. Roberts, I do want to ask you exists. about abortion um, because awesome. it is a you know an issue that is at the top of mind for folks all over this country right now, waiting on a case from the Supreme Court in Tala. Um, in Louisiana, um, in places all over this country, uh, abortion care is unavailable to people that may need it. You and the, the organization organization in this plan talks about changing the Department of Health and Human Services to the Department of Life. Uh, do you think that women in America should be able to get an abortion if that is what their doctor says they need? Uh, abortion's not health care. I find it really interesting, if, if not worse, that you wouldn't support the change of the department name to the Department of Life. I thought we were all in support of life. We believe eminently in women's rights, and particularly women's rights in the womb. And so the real question that you should be asking is... I just, just want to know, is, if why, I may, though, because I do ask the question. Why are we talking here, about so the people I just, I just who are know, supporting do you believe... legislation that abortion can happen until three days after the person's born? This is an absurd framing by this network. That is an absurd assertion. As a person with an really? actual womb, I'm telling you that does that. So but let me just back up. Legislators so in do, California, do you New York, who Dr. Roberts, filed does, this bill. Do, does Heritage and Project 2025 believe that a woman should be able to have an abortion if her doctor says that she needs one? It's a yes or no question. Abortion is not health care. So abortion that is, is a the no? murder of a human being. All right. Well, I disagree thoroughly I with you Dr. Might. Kevin Roberts, but I am so glad that you were here. And we are so disappointed you couldn't hear Alicia. So that means you got to come back, Dr. Roberts. Yeah, we'll you got to come back, okay? Thanks for having me. We'll be right back, folks.